And are being joined by Spasimir Demaratsky, political scientist, University of Warsaw. Good afternoon, sir. Great having you on. Good afternoon. Okay, so let me ask, um, let me ask you about you know, the memory that Bul 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 Bulgarians have, because in 2020, it was the government led by Boyko Borisov, right, that uh, collapsed as a, as a result of uh, the protests uh, that were held in the country. Uh, people were protesting against corruption, among uh, other issues. And now it seems that his party, GERB, and he himself are going to win again and, and take the power back. So wh why is that? How is that possible? That's an excellent question, uh, and uh, the, 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 I think that the essence of this whole story is that uh, people got tired of this uh, uh, constant instability that you have mentioned previously in your report. Um, six elections within three years uh, have uh, two sides of the coin. The first one is that this should be the, the only medicine in democracy to change political elites. Uh, the other side of the coin is that if these elections are too often, people get tired, they get frustrated with the uh, lack of uh, stability, lack of perspectives. Many dimensions of Bulgarian's politics uh, became, in a sense, uh, hostages of uh, this political instability. Uh, and what they started to look for is uh, another um, return to uh, to stability. The paradox is that, of course, uh, uh, the most direct reason for the current situation is the last government of uh, um, Prime Minister Denkov, uh, which uh, constituted a very awkward type of coalition uh, between GERB and uh, reformist parties that were trying to make a difference. Uh, Boyko Borisov uh, felt that after nine months of uh, uh, collaboration, he managed to convince uh, Bulgarian population that anyone who collaborates with him eventually is going uh, to get a kiss of death, of political death. And that's what also the reformist parties got. So now uh, he remains uh, the only political actor with uh, stable political support uh, that is going most probably to uh, seal uh, a, a, a victory in the Sunday elections. That's right. And uh, Mr. Borisov, he has a he has a long history. And uh, is it is it uh, just conjecture or is it true that he has connections uh, with Russia and with big Russian business? Boyko Borisov is a unique type of a politician, I think. Uh, one of these people that are worth studying, if we look at his uh, CV, we will realize uh, that this is a person starting from being bodyguard to, to the last uh, communist leader, uh, Todor Zhivkov, uh, through um, uh, surviving the murky 1990s with having his own company, providing security services, to becoming a firefighter and a, uh, um, uh, mayor of Sofia, uh, to the fact that he is the uh, three times prime minister of Bulgaria, uh, a person that managed, uh, that, that, that learned how to play politics both with the EU, within the EU, and with Russia. Uh, this is the guy who managed to take Bulgarian uh, taxpayers' money to build uh, a pipeline that is theoretically called Turkish, but in practical terms serves the Russian interests. So it, 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 he is indeed quite a, quite a political character, uh, one that Ursula von der Leyen, as you showed in your uh, report, comes to support in the in the forthcoming elections because his party belongs to the European People's Party. So a politician that knows how to survive and the, a politician that has created an amazing structure uh, that in practical terms constitutes, a, I would say, a spider network that controls the whole country in Bulgaria. Uh, right. I mean, uh, certainly very interesting. And I was actually wondering what kind of look it is for, for Mrs. Uh, von der Leyen to, you know, sort of to appear next to uh, Mr. Borisov. But I mean, it's not my, uh, you know, my, my judgment here. So um, let me uh, ask you about revival. Uh, it is a very conservative uh, party, pro-Russian views, um, but they were, I believe, in the fourth place, um, looking at some of the polls um, earlier in the year. And now they're sort of... Um, 
they enjoy 15% support. I think the same support that uh, Movement for Rights and Freedoms has, and also, uh, and also the We Continue the Change, right? The party that used to uh, participate with uh, with uh, GERB. So uh, let me ask you about revival. Will they make it to the European Parliament? Well, uh, if the, uh, the the public opinion polls uh, are accurate, then they will definitely send their representatives to the uh, European Parliament. I would argue that here the argument about conservatism is probably uh, a little bit overstated. This is in particular a uh, pro-Russian and populist party. There is a little of... Uh, uh, conservatism, much more of opportunism, uh, and uh, this party is just uh, uh, the next reincarnation of this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, pro-Russian type of uh, political parties in Bulgaria. The last one uh, um, that was participating in the last Borisov's government, and they uh, they took the blame uh, for the government's collapse. Uh, people literally turned. Uh, 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 away from them, and uh, what they looked for is just another project that will gonna repeat the same slogans, and that's what uh, a revival in practical terms is. Right, uh, very interesting. And just uh, let me ask you this uh, short last question about turnout, because it seems that it's uh, sort of oscillating around 40%. Uh, do you think anything can be uh, done to sort of uh, make people uh, go to the polls? First, I mean, a very last minute effort, anyhow. Uh, again, this uh, question has uh, these two sides of the coin. Uh, Bulgarian European elections are usually uh, uh, circulating around 35% uh, uh, of, um, of turnout. So the fact that this year we have connected uh, or two in one elections, uh, both uh, to the European Parliament and to the SNAP elections, as you, as you mentioned, uh, actually provides uh, the European elections with the chance that there will be uh, a slightly higher turnout. On the other hand, uh, what we see, if we look from the perspective of these six consecutive elections, what we see is that there is a constantly uh, declining turnout. So, yes, you're absolutely right. This might most probably be around 40%. Uh, of the turnout. Well, people just got fed up with uh, politics, I believe. Spasimir Domaratsky, thank you, sir, for being with us this afternoon. Thank Pleasure, you very much sir. for the invitation. Pleasure.